All right, objects in the solar system. So, um, can't really see the picture there. Um, so, what's in our solar system in terms of planets, dwarf planets, that sort of thing? So, first off, what is a solar system? So, a solar system is a group of planets that orbit a central star. So, because the sun is the most mass, and remember 99% of the mass, everything orbits the sun. There are, a, in our solar system, there's a sun, there's nine planets, three dwarf planets, there are also various moons and asteroids. Um, the reason I say nine planets, not ten, is in 2006, the International Astron Astronomical Union, um, it's basically a group of scientists who determine how what we call things in space, um, decided to remove Pluto as a planet and create a new category because we noticed a planet that was farther away than Pluto and didn't behave at all like a planet, but it was actually bigger than Pluto. So we either had to make this an 11th planet, even though it didn't really make sense, or we had to get rid of Pluto. So, the planets out from the Sun, by the way, this you will need to remember, are Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and then there are the dwarf planets, Ceres, Pluto, Eris, and there are a few more we'll talk about that are farther away. By the way, this picture is correct to scale, but not to distance. In fact, you will never see a map of the solar system that is actually correct to distance. Um, in fact, I put a neat little app, um, program um, website on the helpful sh stuff for this because to give you an idea of how far things are away, there's basically a little thing where you can scroll and see how far things planets actually would be away if they were to scale. Um, it's not possible. Um, if you had a sun that was basically the size of, say, a beach ball, you know, Mercury would be half a football field away. Um, Pluto would actually not be on planet Earth. It, that's how far away you would have to put it. Um, you know. By the time you got to, you know, Jupiter, Jupiter would be somewhere in Pembroke. Um, it'd be crazy. So, the Sun is the biggest thing in the solar system. So its radius is the twice the distance from the Earth to the Moon. So, if you want to think about how big the Sun is, the Sun is basically, the Moon, if you had the Earth in the middle of the Sun, the Moon would be halfway, and the Sun would go another distance to the Moon away. That's how big the Sun actually is and all the planets are bound to the Sun by gravity. So, all the planets revolve, remember that's from the last one, revolving means we move around in a circle. You'll start seeing why Pluto's a little weird right now, because, well, it's not on the same plane as the other ones, it's not even close. Everything else is basically on a nice little platform. They all revolve around the Sun in a counterclockwise direction, in slightly elliptical orbits. Now, one of the big mistakes you'll see in textbooks is we want it, you know that it's an ellipse, not a, not a circle, um, but that really confuses people and actually leads people to believe that, you know, things like this, you know, summer is when we're closest to the sun because the Earth's orbit is an ellipse, not a circle. In fact, it's almost entirely circular. It's just a tiny, tiny little bit of an ellipse. If you were actually to look at it, you wouldn't be able to tell it was an ellipse. So, and they all go counterclockwise. Um, there's some really interesting things in physics about why things tend to spin counterclockwise in space. Um, it seems to be something true about the universe, that the universe is left-handed, that it wants to spin counterclockwise. Um, in fact, all planets spin counterclockwise as their rotation, except one. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, so almost things like to go counterclockwise. So, close to the Sun is Mercury. It's 57.9 kilometers from the, million kilometers from the Sun. Not really close. Um, it has an orbital period of 88 days. Um, it's made of rock, so it's a rocky or a terrestrial planet. And its temperature is either minus 180 degrees on the side that's facing away from the Sun, or 426 degrees Celsius on the side that's facing the Sun. So Mercury is close enough that it's tidally locked. That's what I was talking about last time. The same face of Mercury always points towards the Sun. 
And so you have one light side and one dark side, one that's really hot, one that's really cool. Venus is the next planet, um, named after the Roman goddess of beauty, because it looked like this beautiful green planet. Unfortunately, it turns out that the color is due to the sulfur dioxide in the atmosphere, um, and it is not a really happy planet to live on. Um, it's 108 million kilometers from the sun. It is an orbital period of 224.7 days. It rotates clockwise. We don't know why. Venus rotates in the opposite direction to every other planet. So most of the planets rotate counterclockwise. Venus, for some reason, goes the other way. And we don't know. It gives physicists a giant problem. We're trying to make solar system formation models. It is a, does have a rocky surface underneath that giant thick sulfur atmosphere. And its temperature at the surface is actually 470 degrees. We sent a probe to Venus. Um, this is what the surface of Venus looks like, by the way taken in the hour before the probe literally melted because it's so hot on the surface of Venus. Um, so Venus, not a really beautiful planet to go visit. Earth is the only planet we know that can support life. It's 150 million kilometers from the sun, orbital period of 365 and a quarter days. The temperature, the lowest temperature ever recorded on Earth is minus 85 degrees. The highest is 58 degrees. Um, it has a rocky core and a nitrogen-oxygen atmosphere and one moon. Again, basically, we don't know a lot about the Earth as once we get past this little crust part. Like, we've never actually gone into the mantle because as you do, it gets hotter and it gets the force of gravity will actually cause you to collapse. So no one could ever make it to the center like they did in that horrible movie. So we actually don't know what, we think we know what's in here, but we're not really sure. Mars is the next planet. It's 228 meter million kilometers from the sun. So it's actually just, just in the habitable zone, the Goldilocks zone. Um, so there are some people who think that we could actually terraform Mars to make it livable. Um, there are some problems with that, but it could possibly be done. Um, it has an orbital period of 687 days, so a year on Mars is about two years on Earth. It's only half the size of Earth, though, which means that the gravity would be half as much. So you, you know, most of us would be able to dunk very easily on Mars. Mars basketball would rock. Um, the temperature is on minus 120 degrees because there's no atmosphere. So at night, there's nothing to hold the heat in. There's no greenhouse effect, and it gets really, really cold really fast. In the day, it's a balmy 30 degrees. Um, Unfortunately, there's lot. There's not enough atmosphere to actually breathe. What there is is methane, um, so you couldn't really go out without a spacesuit. Um, it has a rocky atmosphere and it rocky surface, and it does have an atmosphere. It also does seem to have a large amount of water in these polar ice caps and possibly under the surface as well. Um, we actually think Mars used to have water. We're not sure where why it's not there anymore. Um, it does have two moons, two tiny moons, Phobos and Deimos. And Mars, you know, Mars kind of looks a little more appetizing as somewhere you might want to visit. Like, it actually does. It seems to almost have a nice, pretty sky, you know, a sand dune. The trouble is, you know, you can't breathe. Um, and it is, as I said, much colder than Earth most of the time. But you could possibly, there are resources there we could use um, for energy. Uh, these are the two moons, Phobos and Deimos. Um, they're much, much smaller than our moon. In fact, our moon is one of the biggest moons in the, in the solar system. All right, Jupiter. Jupiter is the biggest planet in the solar system by far. Um, 778 million kilometers of the sun. It's actually twice as far from Mars to Jupiter as it is from the sun to Mars. So we often, when you look at a solar system map, you almost get a weird idea that everything's sort of spaced out. It's really not. Um, so it's the same distance to go the Sun to Mars. You would have to go that distance twice again to actually get to Jupiter. It's a gas giant, so it's what we call a Jovian planet. Um, it takes 11.9, 12 years to orbit. So in your life, Jupiter has orbited the Sun once. Its temperature is about 160 degrees. Some people call it a failed star. Um, 
Um, but that's not really, really accurate because, as I said, the sun is 99% of this, the, you know, it would need to be, you know, 100% bigger than it is to actually have a chance of becoming a star. So that's, you'll hear that a lot, but I really wouldn't put much stock in it. Um, to give you an idea of the size, um, this is Jupiter, this is the Earth. In fact, Jupiter has a storm that is bigger than the planet Earth, um, this, this great red spot. A storm that we've basically been watching for a century, which actually seems to be dying right now, which is kind of cool. Saturn um, is a beautiful planet because of its its distinctive dust and ice rings, which we finally now know what they are because we've sent probes through them. Um, again, look how far it is away. So 1,400 1, million kilometers from the sun. 30 years. So in my life, Saturn has orbited the Earth once. It's again, it's a gas giant made of hydrogen, helium, and methane, and it's 180, minus 180 degrees, and it has those beautiful rings. Um, so Saturn is actually a, a really, really beautiful, beautiful kind of neat planet. We don't, um, we're trying to figure out what caused the rings. Most of the Jovian planets actually do have rings, so Jupiter does have rings. It's just not, you know, quite as beautiful as Saturn's rings. All right, Uranus. Uh, we all know the joke. Um, it's 2,870 million kilometers from the sun. It is an 84-year orbit, so you might see Uranus orbit once within your lifetime. Um, Uranus is a weird planet because it's tilted. Um, so most planets rotate along, you know, a vertical axis like this. Uranus seems to be tilted on its side and rotates like this, which is weird. Um, we, we don't know why. We think something might have come by and knocked it on its side at some point. Um, it's very cold, um, which again adds to the joke, right? That Uranus, someone, you know, someone smacked Uranus and tilted it sideways, and you know, Uranus is very cold and full of gas. Um, I like the jokes personally. Um, you'll hear people say, "Call it Uranus." No, it's not. It's Uranus. Um, that's how it's pronounced. People just astronomers just try to not, you know, get the giggles. So I thought Uranus does have a ring, by the way. So there is a ring around Uranus, um, and as as you can see, the weird thing is the ring is vertical because the planet is tilted ninety degrees, um, which is kind of odd. Neptune is 4,400 million kilometers from the sun. Um, you're not gonna see Neptune go around once. Um, in fact, for the longest time until about six years ago, Neptune was actually farther away than Pluto was. Um, it has very, very thin rings um, and it's very, very cold. And again, it's a gas giant. All right, then there's the dwarf planets. So for something to be a planet or a dwarf planet, it has to orbit the sun. So the term planet means orbits a sun. You have to have enough mass to become round. So when things are big enough, gravity will basically pull them into a round shape. Um, if they don't have enough mass to become round like some of the, you know, asteroids and stuff, um, that's not a planet. So a, a planet has to be round, and so does a dwarf planet. Otherwise, it's an asteroid. Um, however, Dwarf planets aren't large enough to have an impact on their area. So, for example, Pluto and its moon basically orbit each other. It's not that the moon orbits Pluto. Um, they don't clear their area. So they're not the dominant thing in their area because of their gravity. There are currently three dwarf planets. Actually, there are five now. Um, Eris, Pluto, Ceres, um, Hama, and Makmak have been added as well. And there's about 23 other ones that are still in the in the process. Pluto, now one of the neatest things about teaching, you know, science is between where I started and where I finished, um, science really advances. So up until 2015, this was actually the best picture of Pluto I could give, the highest rest picture of Pluto I could give to students. It was taken in 1996. This we now have beautiful close-ups of Pluto because of the probe that we sent. So now we have great, we actually know that Pluto actually has a giant heart-shaped 
valley on it, which is actually kind of cool. Um, it's much, much smaller than Earth. It's actually about comparable to the size of our moon. It does have one moon. It's incredibly cold, but it's a rocky planet. So it's it's a small, rocky planet, uh, which is kind of weird because we went sort of rocky planets, gas giants, and now there's rocky planets again. So to give you an idea, if that's Pluto, that's Earth. Much, much smaller. Closer to the size of our moon. Ceres is the smallest dwarf planet. In fact, it was called an asteroid, for, and it actually got promoted when Pluto got demoted. It's located in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. So it's about 2.5 to 2.9 times the distance between the Earth and the Moon and the, and the Sun. Um, it's tiny, so it only has a mass of you know 9 times 10 to the 20 kilograms. Um, the Earth is 10 to the 24, by the way. So it's not really tiny. Um, it is smaller than the Moon. It's only 950 kilometers across. Um, and we sent a probe called the Dawn mission to actually look at Ceres in 2015, and it's given us some really kind of neat pictures. Um, we figured out why there's some areas that almost seem to glow. There seems to have these cool salt geysers that shoot up into the into the space. Again, there's Ceres with comparison to our Moon. Eris was the one that caused Pluto to be demoted. Um, and it's kind of apt her name. So she's named after the goddess of discord and strife because of all the problems she caused. Let no one say astronomers don't have a sense of humor. Um, so it's bigger than Pluto, still much smaller than the Earth. It orbits every 556.7 years. Um, it has a moon called Dysnomia, and it has an orbit, but it's incredibly elliptical. So it's even wackier than Pluto's orbit. Then we noticed Haumea. Um, it was discovered in 2003, and it's 43 times as far from the Earth, for, sorry, from the Sun as the Earth is. It has two known moons. Radius is 620, and there are there are a few others, but I'm not going to go into them. I'm not going to make you memorize them. Every little dwarf planet there is, as I said, I think it's up to about 23 now. Um, the candidates. Make make was discovered in 2005. It's 45,000. Um, by the way, this is the best picture we have of it. Um, it has a possible moon, but we're not sure. And again, it's smaller than our moon. Now, there's you'll hear about something called Planet X. Um, no, it's not this prophetic thing that's going to destroy the world. But a lot of the math show, when we look at the orbits of planets and how much the sun wiggles, it looks like the model fits. If you put a Neptune-sized planet also way out in the Kuiper belt, so way, way, way far away. Um, we haven't seen it yet, but we've predicted where it could be. So there's a lot of telescopes looking there, and hopefully we'll actually see that there's another giant planet somewhere out, you know, in, in the far reaches of space. So that's the planets in our solar system. So I will want you to actually know a little bit about each of them. Um, and I like, and you will need to know what the or, what the order is. So I would like you to know Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. You don't need to know where the dwarf planets are. All right, that's it for today.